With Canadian Pacific set to return in just a few weeks' time, we've come here to the National Railway Museum in York to speak to someone who's been behind the scenes and one of the leading lights of the project to show you that this whole locomotive overhaul is more than just the locomotive itself. Welcome to In The Loop. Hello folks and welcome to not exactly the Watercrest Line, although it's lovely to see a part of our history here for everyone to enjoy once more. Now, before we get into the main part of the episode, it's time for a quick fire look back at Ropley to see what's been happening since the last episode. And just like that, welcome back to Ropley, where we start here with our bullet carriage 4211 which is nearing the end of its time here in the carriage works after having, not gonna deny, a mountain of work done to it from a brand new roof using the new epoxy technology to the interior, which is getting ready for fit out. On the outside here, you can see them rubbing down ready for a repaint and rest assured, it is gonna look absolutely fantastic when it gets back out onto our rails. Outside the carriage shed, you find Canadian Pacific here on the pit. It's having its steam test today where the boiler inspector comes down to satisfy themselves that everything, well, is working correctly. And needless to say, there's um, a lot of steam and noise to show for it, but that's all part of the testing. Now, since the last time we saw it, the Ivert's boiler has moved from the boiler shop and has been lifted back into its frame. So it's currently being uh, plumbed back together, ready to go back into service. And this is the ideal time to say, if you would like to keep track of everything happening here at Ropley MPD, then the page to follow is Ropley MPD, where the team here post fantastic regular updates about everything happening in the sheds. Well worth a look. Now, a few of you may have noticed that until recently, we have been missing one of our locomotives from our running fleet. And that's because Kilmerston here has been with our friends at the Chelsea and Wallingford Railway over the winter period, hauling trains for their Santa Special. But rest assured, it's back now, it's ready for action, and we should see it back out and about very soon indeed. Towards the end of last year, we were visited by STEM Unity. They do wonderful work trying to get young people interested and involved in STEM subjects, which understandably for railways and engineering in general is frightfully important. Now to find out a little bit more, they did actually make a video of the whole day, including some of the interviews they held, and you can find the video on our YouTube channel. So do go online and give that a watch. Now in this year's Heritage Railway Association Awards, our education and outreach team came highly commended in their category. We'd like to say a huge congratulations to Dan and the team for their fantastic work educating and reaching out to our communities to tell us a little bit more about the Watercrest Line's story. So well done, guys. Well, a lot's happening at the Watercrest Line. Now in today's episode, we're up here in York to speak to Dr. Becky Peacock. She was a leading light in the Canadian Pacific project, managing it from the early days, where she can give us some insights into the technological challenges and advancements that have been made that can help Heritage Railways today. Hello, I'm Dr. Becky Peacock and I am currently the Conservation and Collections Care Manager at the National Railway Museum. But I first started my career at the Watercrest Line as the Outreach and Interpretation Officer and subsequently the Project Supervisor on the Canadian Pacific Project. Canadian Pacific was moved down to Eastleigh where it's for an assessment somewhere to store it under dry cover. There was a small volunteer team there as well who were looking over the vehicle and dismantling it for potential overhaul. And in 2015, the HLF, the Heritage Lottery Fund, awarded the Watercrest Line uh, money to actually start the overhaul of Canadian Pacific as well as the restoration of two wooden framed carriages which builds this really wonderful project which had a whole host of other elements like outreach and education and interpretation being put in place at Rockley. And so the project really started with that influx of funding and it was the small volunteer team down at Eastleigh who were really kind of spearheading that project, working tirelessly to kind of dismantle it, send parts up to Ropley. So in terms of an engineering project, it was really difficult because you had the locomotive in one place 
and you had all of the facilities to build that locomotive in another. So you were constantly transporting parts backwards and forwards. The reality is, from an engineering perspective for Canadian Pacific, it's had a lot of work done, a lot of things that we weren't aware of that were wrong with it. In 2002, Canadian Pacific was on a mainline tour. It stopped at Paddock Wood. And while it was there, it blew a boiler tube. And what we found out is that it was then restricted to Heritage Railways, it came to the Watercrest line, but we didn't realise the extent of damage that that boiler tube had caused to the locomotive itself. So until the boiler was removed, we were unaware that the ash pan had become welded to the frame extension on Canadian Pacific. Where they'd dropped the fire so quickly, um, that had caused quite a lot of damage in that area. In actual fact, it had warped the entire frame extension. So we had to cut out sections of the frame extension, get new plate made and rivet and weld new plate into place. So a whole host of work that wasn't factored in because we weren't aware of the damage that had been caused. And then we have the boiler. It's amazing that Canadian Pacific has a, an original 1941 boiler. It's not its original boiler, but it is an original 1941 boiler, which is, is a feat in itself to still have something of that age. Unfortunately, when it got non-destructive testing, it came back with only a few areas of, of kind of degradation. And so we thought it was going to be a simple job. We probably should have known it wasn't. Uh, it's a merchant navy. They're never simple if you ever talk to anybody working on them. And unfortunately, as the boiler shop team worked through the boiler itself, they found that it had severe wasting, pitting, several cracked stays, and we also had severe cracks through the inner firebox. We obviously had the four corners, which are where most deterioration on a boiler happens, where the water pools because it can't come out of, uh, of the boiler sufficiently. So we knew those four corners were bad, but to hear that an entire inner firebox was basically shot and we couldn't use it was a huge blow to the project and to the team as a whole. We spent a lot of time researching what we could do. There was only one place in the country that could press the steel large enough for a Merchant Navy in a firebox. Canadian Pacific is the first Merchant Navy to have a full brand new inner firebox. So as an engineering project, that's quite an achievement to build something that no one else has done before and to really take that project on. But in that, we managed to find a positive out of it. So we started working with the British Institute of Non-Destructive Testing to look at how NDT, um, in its shortened form, would actually need to change to help us in further locomotive restorations. The technology had moved on, but we were still using quite outdated methods to NDT steam locomotive boilers and heritage boilers in general. And so we've been working with them since to improve those methods and to get techniques that could in itself mean that we don't have to remove boiler cladding to be able to inspect the boiler. So you could do pre-inspections really in depth, knowing what the boiler is looking like without dismantling the locomotive, which is a real game changer from an engineering perspective to have a fully cost project prior to actually taking it apart. So while there were negatives and real kind of downsides that we were finding with Canadian Pacific, we were able to turn them into quite good positives that not only had a, an impact on the project, but have an impact on the heritage railway industry as a whole. So it was really nice to be able to provide those benefits. The wonderful thing about Canadian Pacific is she is the oldest and fastest surviving merchant navy. You know, alongside that, Canadian Pacific as a, a locomotive had a lot of changes throughout its time. It was the only one of the Merchant Navy that was fitted with a mechanical stoker. Uh, and this trial was to see if they could increase uh, the distribution of coal into the firebox. Uh, Merchant Navies are, are quite uh, coal hungry, takes a lot to make them work, can be quite arduous for the firemen uh, firing these locomotives, particularly on long journeys. And so this mechanical stoker was fitted to trial whether this could replace 
the firemen on board merchant navies make them much more efficient. Uh, it was a completely failed experiment. Um, the mechanical stokers are used quite a lot in Canada where they have regularised coal sizes. We don't have that in the UK, so it kept getting stuck. The coal would get stuck in the mechanical stoker, it would break down and the locomotive would be stranded on the network. And what's really interesting about this is part of that trial was to work out what the capacity output of a merchant navy boiler was. Uh, no one had been able to kind of determine what that was. So during these trials they had one fireman on board the footplate shoveling coal and with that one foot fireman they couldn't reach the capacity output of the boiler so they stuck a second fireman. Working in unison they were shoveling coal into the firebox and even with two you cannot shovel coal fast enough for a merchant navy boiler to reach its capacity output. So basically as it stands at the moment we don't know the limit of a merchant navy firebox or a boiler. It is in itself limitless because we haven't ever managed to get enough coal into the locomotive to reach its limit. Uh, there are some hypotheses as to whether if we actually managed to shovel coal sufficiently enough into that, whether it would actually ever beat Mallard's record because it has such a powerful boiler. When they got rebuilt in the 50s, they were a much better locomotive to work with. Still temperamental, as with every locomotive. Uh, they all have their own personality traits. But it saw kind of the change in a much more efficient design um, after that change in the 50s to the locomotive. I am really looking forward to seeing Canadian Pacific run again. Um, I spent four and a half years on the project. Um, and I, you know, obviously left before it was finished. We've had COVID since then. It has been a project that I have still followed and I have still answered many questions from the team at the Watercrest line um, about what things have been done, uh, where things were kept, uh, still kept in touch with the wonderful volunteer team who just spent so much time and effort on the locomotive, so much passion. It's sad that unfortunately we've lost a few of the team during this time. For me, we talk about the locomotive as a testament to women, but it's also a testament to all of that passion of the volunteer team. And to see that locomotive for me will be a time to remember the volunteers who we've lost during that time, a time to really celebrate the team at the Watercrest line, all of the countless hours, the engineering milestones and absolute nightmares that they've overcome to get to a point where we have Canadian Pacific running. It is going to be a really wonderful thing to see. It's safe to say when that first train pulls out of Allsford, it is going to be absolutely brilliant. We can't wait for it. And if you would like to book your tickets, for those first few running days, then do visit watercrestline.co.uk. And if you would like to find out more about what's happening at Rockley MPD, then the page to follow is Rockley MPD, where the guys here post regular updates. It's well worth a look indeed. But that's it for us this time, folks. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Becky for chatting to us and to our friends at the National Railway Museum for hosting us. And we'll see you next time. <laughs>